Okay, so now we're going to install uh, git python pip and then maybe try to get some uh, virtual environment uh, packages installed. So let's start with git sudo apt get install git. Okay. Okay, so let's try to install some other stuff. So sudo apt get install python dash pip. Here it goes. Yes. Okay, now let's try to use pip. Pip is going to be what we're going to use to install Python packages. So, sudo, oops, sudo pip install virtual env. Okay. All right. Let's try a virtual env wrapper and hope it works. Okay. Okay, to continue with virtual environment wrapper in order to use it in a way that's most convenient, and it does make using virtual environments very convenient, we're going to follow the directions at this website, roundhere.net slash journal slash virtual and dash ubuntu dash 12 dash 10. I will post that link. So here's what we've done. We've installed pip virtual environment. Now um, we should actually create the we're doing this a bit out of order, but it's okay. We're going to create this directory where we're going to store our virtual environments. So let's go to Ubuntu. Okay, so let's make directory VNs in our home directory. So virtual environments. Okay. And what's the next instruction? They called it something else. I'll call mine VMs. So install virtual environment wrapper. We've done that. Export work on home. So there's this work on directory. This is where this is a command that tells you virtual environment wrapper where to put the files for all your virtual environments. So let's paste here, but let's just change this to the name of the directory we created. Okay, so that just set a, an environment variable. So now we want to add this line to our bash rc file. So let's go back and do that. nano dot bash rc. And let's do sudo just in case. Sudo and control v to go to the end. And then let's paste that line. Yep. And then control x to save and exit. Now in order for this to actually work, uh, we should reload the bash, which we can do with the source command. So let's go ahead and do that. So source bash rc. Okay. So let us go ahead and start making some virtual environments. Um, we use the command mk virtual env. So let's copy that. And Ubuntu will paste it. But let's call it something else. So call it website one. Okay. And then as you can see, look at the, the prompt, it's changed to website one. So that's it's that's the indicator that you're in the virtual environment for website one. And we can get out of that virtual environment and go to a regular environment by just typing deactivate. Okay. And as you can see our prompt has changed, it doesn't have that prefix to it. Now let's make a virtual environment for another website, website two. Uh, or let's call it uh, headbook. Okay. There you go, and it's automatically uh, 
activated the headbook virtual environment. So we can deactivate and get to our uh, normal environment. So if you want to list the virtual environments that you have installed, type work on, and you get the list. We made a virtual environment called headbook and another one called website one. And these, each of these, when you're when you've activated those, will have their own well, separate virtual environments. They can have different environment variables. They can have different Python packages installed, different versions of the same Python package installed. And that's great for um, dealing with dependencies and such. So if you want to change to one of those work environment, um, sorry, one of those virtual environments, type work on and the name. So website one. Oh, what did I do? Oh, I need an underscore. And there you go. That shows what packages are installed. And there you have it. So then let's deactivate and hit freeze. And these are all the these are the packages that are involved in uh, installed in our normal environment. When you create a virtual environment, it does it with the minimal with almost no site packages. So you don't have all of these packages installed. And that's a good thing because you want to control what's installed. Uh, in your virtual environment. Okay, so uh, that's it for now. In the next tutorial, we'll look at cloning a repository from Git and installing the package requirements. Okay, until next tutorial, bye-bye.